Greetings everyone and welcome back to Bugs in Biology. Now the content of today's video is going to be rather different to what is usual for this channel, but I hope you enjoy it all the same. The Cambrian, which was the earliest period in the Paleozoic era, is widely renowned for the utterly bizarre creatures that flourished during the time. One group that was especially prolific and diverse during the Cambrian were the Radiodonts. If you have any interest in prehistoric life, then you may have heard of undoubtedly the most well-known member of this group, Anomalocarus, widely hailed as the earliest known apex predator. Anomalocarus has been portrayed in numerous documentaries about prehistory, most notably Walking with Monsters, which made the rather questionable move of adding metallic bangs when depicting a fight between two individuals, making the conflict reminiscent of a pair of especially competitive children in a bumper car arena. Anomalocarus, however, seems to have hogged the spotlight, and the sheer diversity of the radiodonts is resultantly quite underappreciated. So, I think it's fair to say that they deserve some long-awaited attention, especially since a fascinating new species has recently been discovered. The Burgess Shale in Canada is one of the most infamous Cambrian fossil sites in the world. Thanks to the incredible diversity of otherworldly organisms that have been preserved there in exceptional detail. Yet in spite of its rather long-held fame, the Burgess Shale continues to surprise us with intriguing new fossil species, and recently one of the largest animals ever found in the site has been unearthed. Meet Titanocorus gamesi, a close relative of Anomalocarus, with what could only be described as one hell of a noggin. But before we take a closer look at Titanochorus, it would pay to get acquainted with the Radiodonts as a whole. So let's go over what they are and some of their key characteristics. The Radiodonts were an order of stem group U arthropods, meaning in simple terms that they are an extinct lineage of organisms that are more closely related to living arthropods than they are to the arthropods' closest living relatives. They first appeared during the Cambrian period, which is also when their diversity appears to have peaked. A few persisted into later periods, such as the huge filter-feeding Agyro Cassis from the Ordovician, though they ceased to represent a significant portion of the marine fauna. The Radiodonts were highly variable in appearance, though can be unified by a handful of shared characteristics. One of these is the feature from which they get their name. Radiodont means radial teeth, referring to a ring of tooth plates surrounding their mouth, forming a circular structure called an oral cone that has been aptly described as resembling a slice of pineapple. Radiodonts also possessed rows of lateral flaps along the length of their bodies which were probably moved in a wave-like motion to propel the animal through the water. One could call them the ocean's first flappy boys. Their heads were protected by a carapace complex, consisting of three sclerites, a central H element covering the dorsal surface of the head, and two lateral sclerites, or P elements, on the lateroventral surfaces. They can be seen on this diagram as HE and PE, respectively. Another key trait shared by radiodonts is a pair of appendages protruding from the animal's head, adorned with spines which were likely used to capture and manipulate prey. The morphology of these appendages varies greatly between species depending on their feeding habits, rendering them highly useful for differentiating various radiodont species and making inferences about their lifestyles. So now that you hopefully have an idea of what a radiodont is, let's turn our attention back to the star of this video, Titanochorus. 
12 specimens of the species were found, all of which are currently housed at the Royal Ontario Museum. They consisted predominantly of what appear to be malt assemblages, meaning many of the fossils most likely represent the shed exoskeletons of Titanochorus individuals, as opposed to the bodies of the animals themselves. Nevertheless, as the exoskeletons of arthropods and their relatives tend to resemble the live animal very closely, I'll admit to using spider malts to prank people a number of times, the animal can still be reliably reconstructed from them. The specimens, however, were mostly fragmentary, and some had been deformed during the burial process. Despite these imperfections, much insight about these long-lost animals could be gained from the fossils found. Perhaps the most astonishing feature about this animal was its size, measuring half a metre in length. While this may not seem overly impressive by standards of modern animals, at a time when most creatures were smaller than your finger, Titanochorus would have been nothing less than a behemoth. And over half of this creature's length was represented by its shield-like carapace, the feature from which the animal earned its name, for Titanochorus means Titanic Helmet. The carapace's texture was well preserved in many specimens, with longitudinal ridges being clearly apparent. Protected by the carapace was, of course, the animal's enormous head, a feature that would have probably earned this species the nickname of Sniper's Dream from Bob Mortimer. Its front appendages bore very long endites, or ventral spines, which were themselves adorned with secondary spines, giving them a somewhat feather-like appearance. It is thought that Titanochorus used its appendages to sweep the sediments at the bottom of its watery habitat for burrowing animals such as worms, and the rest of the animal's morphology does seem to fit a nectobenthic habit. Certainly, its odd shape would have prevented it from living the more actively swimming lifestyle that has been inferred for some other radiodonts such as Anomalocarus. Other aspects of the animal's anatomy, such as the eyes and lateral flaps, have not been preserved in the fossils that have been found thus far, and were hypothetically reconstructed based on a smaller, closely related species called Cambrorasta falcatus, which due to its distinctive shape was named after Han Solo's ship, the Millennium Falcon, from the Star Wars saga. Cambrorasta has been found fossilised alongside assemblages of Titanochorus, so the two organisms were almost certainly sympatric, and this short clip shows a reconstruction of Cambrorasta swimming along, closely followed by the larger Titanochorus. So there we have it, one more fascinating animal to add to the ever-growing list of Cambrian oddities. And with that, I think it's about time that we ended this video. I hope you all enjoyed this venture into a new type of content, and like I've said a few times before, I definitely intend on branching my channel out a little bit. So if you enjoyed my videos, then feel free to check out some of my other uploads. Whoops. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, it really does help a lot and I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you all very much for watching, that is it from me and I'll see you again very soon.